and the IMF program. Now, uh, my name is Daryl Kwa. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Details coming up in a moment. Do stay tuned. Uh, here on the Joy News channel. Today, we are looking at the factors that worked in favor of the NDC's candidate, James Jachi Kwesin, the global info analytics, Harry, the governing, which devastated the capital over the weekend. Uh, uh, also coming up here and we hear from the former chief justice georgina theodora wood who's been looking ahead to next year's elections we hope that it will be about policies and development and not propaganda now uh, we start off with findings of a new polling data from global info analytics which shows that mpp candidate in the recent Assen north by election lost from uh, a lead that he had prior to the elections. All of those coming up here uh, on Pulse. My name is Samuel Kojo Brace. Welcome again. So, um, thanks for keeping us company here. Now, we'll, let's start off with Paul. So, um, thanks for keeping us company here. Now, we'll, let's start off with Paul. I said that that's the reason why the president stood to claim that he has paid all victims of financial cleanup exercise. Then I said, really? And he said, yes. Port, as we speak, um, at the party's uh, um, regional headquarters, my colleague Samuel Imbura is uh, there for us uh, with update uh, through the general secretary and that is what they have done uh, right away so we we have just pitch camp outside uh, waiting for them to come out then we can get to hear from them what exactly uh, transpired but we know very well that it's tomorrow that they will publish officially publish the vetting results after mm. uh, this uh, particular engagement so at, at the moment we can tell who has qualified or who has been disqualified among the 10 aspirants that um, went before the Professor Mike Aaron O'Quiz committee. Mm. Uh, so we, we cannot tell the details in the report as well, but having nosed around, is there anything you can pick up even ahead of the official submission? Well, I, I tried engaging my sources, but what I've been told is that uh, they cannot tell me anything. Sources here are tight lipped about their activities. Um, or what is contained in the report of the committee, they wouldn't divulge a word. They are only telling us that until the report is submitted and directed by the National Council of the Party for its publication, they have nothing to say. It's the same thing they have told the aspirants as well, not to engage the media in any conversation that has to do with um, their, their, their vetting process, what they told them, the questions they asked them, the responses from, from the committee. So uh, information for now is actually tight uh, so far as this BlackBerry race uh, is concerned. So we, we are hoping that at the end of the day, those details will come out. I earlier had a, a conversation with the director of research, Evans Nelako, and he said unless they are done with the entire processes, and remember that this is actually an internal one. So it's not open to the media for us to have access into the engagement room. That will give us maybe, if not details, my first of the information but we are still we are still monitoring but as of now i cannot um say mm. on authority that this person has been qualified this person has been disqualified we are still nosing around mm. to get mm. the details for our mm. our viewers but, but do you see any of the aspirant around no aspirant came here i think about an hour ago i spoke with one of the aspirants to find out from him whether there were some engagements uh, but he told me that they have not engaged them. They are done. They, they are done with their part. The, it's not left with the party um, vetting committee to continue the rest of the processes. So they they have not engaged them because they are done with their part. So for now, it's just left with the party um, vetting committee and the national council to decide who is qualified to lead the party. So in your shots, you can uh, see that some of the committee members. Uh, actually coming out uh, mm -hmm. to go. So we are waiting for the general secretary of the party, Yasu okay. Kodia, and then the um, spokesperson for the vetting committee, uh, Mr. Obi Amwa, to come and brief us on 
the latest development so far as this committee report is concerned. All right. Uh, so, so just uh, keep hanging in there for us so that we can update our, our viewers on what uh, the latest info coming from the, um, uh, that office is. But uh, still staying with politics, findings of a new polling data from Global Info Analytics, uh, which shows that MPP candidates in the recent Assen North by election lost from a winning position because the electorate voted their conscience even though they were given inducement by both parties. The NEC James Dachi Kwesin benefited massively from claims that he was being persecuted by government. It is part of many factors which informed the NDC's victory in the poll. Surely we'll be joined by the executive. In fact, we'll be joined by the executive director for the Global Info Analytics for a deeper understanding of these issues uh, here. Uh, Mr. Musa Dankwa is joining us uh, via uh, Zoom. Grateful to you, sir, for joining us here. In fact, uh, uh, we know that this has been a lot of work to arrive at, uh, arrive at this particular decision. But first of all, share with us the side of, of this poll and how the findings impacted the elections. Right. Thank you very much. Um, usually, exit polls are conducted on the same day as the elections are ongoing. Uh, but for our unique situation, if we had done that, we wouldn't have had a chance for it to be truthful to us because of our peculiar uh, circumstances. So we went back to our synod. Uh, after the elections, and engage the voters to see um, why they voted the way they voted and who actually voted. So we sampled about 543 voters who actually voted that day in the constituency. Uh, we covered six out of the 18 electoral areas as part of this exit poll. And uh, we have 95% confidence uh, level for the poll and a margin of error of 4.18%. And the Interviews were conducted on the 7th July, just last Friday, in the constituency. Now, the overall finding of the poll is that voters took money from both parties, money, inducement, and all sort of things that you can imagine. 96% of people we interviewed said they either witnessed the vote buy in the form of cash, farm tools, bicycles, motorbikes, etc., to influence them to vote for them for, for those parties. Only 4% did not hear that. And for those that we interviewed, 92% said that they personally took some incentives or inducement from the political parties, compared to 8% who would not take anything from the parties. And then 15% of the people we interviewed were saying that they took money from MPP party. 13% took money from NDC. And 72% took money from both parties. Mm-hmm. It means that, I mean, this confirms the allegations and all sort of things that were being said during the fall. From the voters' own mouths. Mm, okay. Interesting. But we had over... 30,000 voters on the, on the day, you got 500. If someone is, is having trouble reconciling 30,000 and 500, how do we get that person to appreciate that? Well, this sample size is quite representative of the number, numbers of people who voted. Actually, what they should be bothering about is the confidence level and the margin of error. Mm. I mean, we fixed the confidence level to give us the margin of error, and that determines the sample size we need to engage in mm. the constituency. We can't interview everybody out of the 1,000. We must pick a sample, and the sample that we pick will give us 95% confidence that if you really you go throughout and interview everybody, the results you will get will be within the margin of error. So it is mm. statistically acceptable for that sample size. Okay. Now, according to your uh, finding, you say, you, you say that first, the final poll before the election suggested that 35% of likely voters were MPP, 42% were NDC, and 13 were floating voters. However, on the election day, 43% of voters were MPP, increase of 8%, while 54% were NDC, an increase of 12% for enthusiasm gap advantage uh, to the NDC. What could have accounted for this? A number of things. I think we noticed that a lot more people who were in undisclosed 
were perhaps NDC guys. Mm -hmm. They were not disclosed. But once you, you, you come to the election and votes are over, you can now decide comfortably to say whether you are MPP, you are NDC. Mm -hmm. And also the turnout was probably higher from the actual result than the polling estimated. And you could see that there were more NDC who came out to vote than MPP. Mm, mm, interesting. Uh, if that's the case, can, can there be an argument that, well, on the, during the general election, the same factors cannot be the, the situation? Look, I would say that um, it will, because it's coming from a swing constituency. Okay. It is a sign that um, MPP could struggle in terms of turnout or their advantage in terms of enthusiasm gap. Mm, mm. And this clearly has enthusiasm gap. And that mm -hmm. has been shown in many of the polls we've been doing. That you can see NDC hitting around 95% or so for, for their own candidate, whereas MPP is around 70% or 75%. So that is something that we expect if MPP doesn't solve, it will take, carry them through the 2024 elections. Mm. And also, in, t in terms of the, the vote buying, I think Asinov will send a strong signal that vote buying will not work. Yeah. We, 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 I'm, we, I'm praying that... Mm -hmm. we, we'll get there. We'll get, we'll, to the buying, but we'll get to the vote buying bit. But you again say that floating voters, where Charles was doing well in the poll, did not bother to show up. Only 2% of the 13% showed up. Secondly, young voters, 18 to 24 and 25 to 34, which Charles was winning by an average of 11% and constituted the largest voting bloc, did not bother to show up to vote. And those who showed up ended up voting for James Jatikwesen by landslide, 23% margin. So it means that the yeah. younger age were not favoring him? No, you see, there were those ages, age group that were probably running around and making noise and probably taking the goodies. Mm. Okay. And they didn't bother to come and vote. And mm. some of them may not even have the vote at all because we have seen that this hasn't had any registration since 2020. So some of these guys may not have you even have votes. So when you have younger voters solidly behind you in that number, okay. you must be very worried and you, you must have a means to get them to the polling station to vote. Mm. Otherwise, the older blocks who are much more reliable in election day, they'll come and undo you. And for them to question, his backers didn't show up. And those who did went for the situation. Mm, and allegedly, they'll come and undo you. And for them to question, his backers didn't show up. And those who did went for the situation. Mm, the thing that we found out was that Ghana's labor force has actually increased by a close to 11%. So the labor force has moved from 11.5 million people to about 12.72 million people. That on the occasion, on the question, of, they did not. 72% of voters said they received inducement from both MPP and NDC. While wow, fifteen percent said they received theirs from the MPP and thirteen uh, people who helped the people in the community, was it because of the government performance or is it because of uh, the community work that these people are engaging? Vote by itself or mm. the thought of persecution and so on and so forth. Mm. Three or two key factors are here very important. One, for those who said that they felt the government was not treating this person right, ninety one percent of them and and wait for the integration, ninety one percent, and only six percent went voted for Charles Okoku. For those who said that they were angered by the vote buying, eighty percent went for the integration, compared to nineteen percent for Charles Okoku. So these two factors, which are very critical, really on, on, on uh, uh, played part in MP losing that that, that constituency. Mm. Mm. Mr. Danko, are you with me? I'm with you. Great. Um, so, so it means that though people took money, they voted for, for Mr. Kwesin because of persecution. Uh, can, we, can we then say that was because the people felt, well, in my heart of heart, I feel Mr. Kwesin is the right person to lead us, not necessarily because government was, was persecuting him. It's a mixture of, of, of all those things. And I think what happened is that those who went for the integration mm. actually wanted to go for him anyway, regardless. I don't mm. think the vote buying really swayed any minds in that mm. If anything, it probably made it worse in okay. terms of those who, those liberal 
or those who were kind of uh, right thinking voters who may be angered by what was going on. Oh, okay. So I don't think the vote buying really played a critical role in, 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 in winning the election for, uh, for, for NDC. The people were fixed in their mind as to what they wanted. Okay, interesting. Um, if we look at this, can we... Can people we... were fixed in their mind as to what they wanted. Okay, interesting. Um, if we look at this, can we... Can we... ...at the UPSA Business Coditorium will take place this afternoon. The program is aimed at advancing conversations on the socio-economic development of Ghana while uh, serving as a medium to proffer solutions... ...the inducement, but according to conscience. Absolutely. I believe so. I truly believe so. And I believe that when they count their losses from Arsene they may desist. Here on our show, um, uh, Musa Dankwa is place. Executive Director for the Global Info Analytics. Joining us is uh, Professor Aludi Seidu, who is Head of the Political Science Department at the University of Ghana, and uh, Mausi Dumenu, Senior Programs Officer and Elections Team Lead for CDD Ghana. Grateful to you, gentlemen, for joining us. Um, let me start with you, Mausi. Um, this obviously is good news for, for the country, when people will take money and still vote uh, on, on their conscience, right? Um, uh, thank you so much for, for this opportunity. Um, I, I, I think uh, the outcome uh, sends a very good signal that, I mean, times have changed and that um, inducements uh, is not the way forward for, for, for our politics, our elections, and our democracy. And so, uh, with this issue, I mean, vote buying, I would say, uh, is not um, a new phenomenon in our body politics. Uh, it's been around for some time now. And, I mean, with each party election, we tend to see uh, a lot more of vote buying within our elections. But when it comes to by elections in particular, because um, practically um, all the, the party machinery and, and everybody's moving into a small space for election, we tend to see a lot more of uh, aggravated um, issues of, I mean, a lot more of the negative issues are being aggravated. Okay. So when it comes to vote buying, for instance, I mean, we've held two by elections uh, in, in the last few months, and it's very clear to me, I mean, come to vote buying, for instance, I mean, we've held two by elections uh, in, in the last few months, and it's very clear to me and then come this day on TV, radio, online, and on ground. The Joy Business Van is powered by Joy Business and supported by EcoBank, the Pan African Bank, and MTN. What are we doing today? I'm very, very uh, magnified. I've become more rampant. And uh, the fact that it was being done blatantly and then glaringly. Uh, in, in public domain without signals, and I believe that um, that positive signals, um, I think uh, my previous speaker earlier had there that going forward, it may not change, not necessarily change, but then at least that signal has been sent. And so that means that politicians now have to rethink their strategies around how they conduct their campaigns and then um, get to know that citizens are becoming, you know, uh, I mean, some of you say that their eyes have become more open in court. And so, let's, I mean, these are things that we are beginning to throw in. But the whole point is that um, if um, votes, I mean, voters are being induced, I mean, first of all, there's a law that actually criminalizes, uh, that actually uh, criminalizes um, and bribery around elections. And so, if you look at representation of the people's law, 1972, uh, PLDC law 284, section 33 of it. And 34, 33, and 34. 33 actually deals with issues around bribing, so inducing voters to vote in a certain way or, or not to even vote is even an offense in itself. And 34 mm. deals with the whole issue about treating. And so there's actually a law that you know, deals with, uh, 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 in some parts, it deals with this whole issue about you know, um, um, vote buying. But interestingly, we've not seen so much in terms of prosecutions coming out of um, um, any of these cases, probably because, yes, we see it and then we talk about it, but maybe nobody takes that step to actually, you know, report the case and, you know, provide very good evidence that, you know, incriminates uh, perpetrators of uh, this crime. 
And so we've seen this issue fester all these years, and then now we are seeing it being done with impunity and then without recourse to uh, anybody around. And so that is where the dangers are, and that is where the problem is. And I'm glad that we are having this conversation uh, I'm almost about two weeks after the elections. It hasn't died down as in previous issues. And I'm even glad that now there's a bit of some empirical information from uh, empirical evidence from global info analytics mm. that has given us more inkling as to how um, the votes by and its effect on the elections. And, 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 and so that, that becomes a good basis for some baseline for us to look at how the trend will even go on in the near future. So, so in terms so of prosecution, of... in terms of prosecution, what are your expectations? Now that we, we saw people on video say that I took money from ABC, what do you expect going forward? Okay, so for me, what I recall from um, the, I think the NDC's, the NDC's internal election that they held earlier on was that I saw a bit of some interest from the Office of the Special Prosecutor who had taken on an interest in uh, trying to clamp down on issues around vote buying and all that. And so we would expect that once that was done from that point on, we would expect that it would not just be something that would, uh, that would stop there. And I think in, in, the, in the election for the district chief executives also, that issue also came up where the OSP took on a number of cases. Took on a, a case, I think, with Joe Ben also. I think just saw Joe Ben. I'm just forgotten the constituency. The district, sorry. And so we also expect that kind of follow up with uh, that kind of initiative that been taken by the uh, Office of the Special Prosecutor mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to clamp down on the issue of vote buying within our elections. Okay. And that should not stop with it. And we need to know, for instance, the the, the extent to which the, the previous investigation for the cases are going to. The public needs to know, and we need to know how far it has gone and 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 what the next steps are in terms of that. And so if an example is made of uh, anybody that um, was prosecuted, and I mean, the case comes to this logical conclusion, and let's assume there's, uh, there's, uh, there's uh, anybody is jailed or anybody is fine or anything from that particular case, at least we would have an example just so that um, it would be a basis for, uh, for, for deterring other offenders. And so for, for, for us, the case that I'm trying to make is that the Office of the Special Prosecutor had taken on a good course and that there's a need for citizens to support uh, this process and then this course. Mm. But in addition to that, we also want to talk about uh, the fact that um, there should be some extensive education um, by the media, by civil society organizations, by well-meaning uh, people to educate citizens about the dangers of vote buying. Because if you are selling your votes, um, you are selling your future invariably. Because, I mean, that means you've taken your cake now. And so mm. the developments and then the other aspirations that you want to see your, 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 your representative undertake in the near future, you've shortened yourself for some patterns now. And so we need to have um, that kind of conversation that are ongoing, mm. sensitization of the public around the issues, so that people get to understand uh, what the issues are when it comes to good buying. And then they will not see that something that become an everyday part of our lives. And so people are just sitting and then waiting for election period to come for them to exact some form of pound of flesh from politicians. I don't think that's the way for us to go. But in addition to that, there should also be a bit more of education around or some form of uh, sensitization around how can citizens also gather compelling evidence around these processes. Because a lot of times I receive videos and all that going on when it comes to, I mean, all sorts of... Uh, a negative uh, public phenomenon, like the vote buying that we are talking about now. But sometimes some of these uh, videos that may probably be submitted as evidence, maybe a lot of it may become inadmissible and all that. Mm. And so how do we then you know, find creative ways of you know, uh, letting citizens and then well meaning people uh, be able to gather compelling evidence that can support the work of, let's say, the Office of the Special Prosecutor mm. mm. and then other law enforcement agencies that are keen on clamping down on the, uh, this issue. Okay. Uh, let, let me bring in Professor Alidu Seydou, um, who is the head of political science department of the University of Ghana. Prof, um, uh, grateful that you could join us here. Now, per what the uh, Global Info Analytics is picking up, they say that young voters between the ages of 18 and 24 and 25, 35, uh, where Charles was winning by average of 11 
and constituted the largest voting bloc did not bother to show up to vote. And those who showed up ended up voting for James Church equation by a landslide, 23% mar uh, margin. Now, the reliable older voters also show increase in their turnout compared to the final poll, and they voted massively, uh, massively for James Dutch equation, winning 10.25%. Uh, what does it mean when you have older people turning up in their numbers to vote than, than, than younger people? Okay, uh, thank you so much, and good afternoon to your uh, listeners and viewers as well. Uh, if you look at the democracy as a system of government, we have always maintained that people's aspirations, wishes, demand for developmental projects, employment, and all those things, that is fed into the political system. Mm -hmm. And the supply is what governments are able to provide. Projects, interventions, programs, creating jobs to address the impulse that is fed into the political system as a form of an output. Mm -hmm. But over the years, and specifically in developed countries, you've seen that demands have actually outstripped supply. Most of the demands of the citizens are not able to... Sorry, uh, the system or politicians mm -hmm. or governments have not been able to meet the demands that constantly come from the citizens since the beginning of uh, our democratic dispensation, but largely in the fourth republic, issues of corruption, issues of unemployment, issues of uh, economic well-being, creating an enabling environment for people to realize their potential, respect for freedoms, find them civic liberties, and all those things have been declining. If you look at uh, global uh, indices that reach Ghana and, and all those things. So you tend to see that high level of apathy. What then motivates a young man like me to go out and vote when I finished school like 10 years ago and I'm still looking for a job. Mm. The idea was that I would have elect a, a government that I believe would be able to provide jobs for me or create an enabling environment for me to start something on my own. So over the years, if I don't see this thing happening and I only see the politician being able to improve on his living standards and live larger than what he earns, then I have no business deciding to go out to vote. So people believe that, the young people believe that we have to take our destiny into our own hands and voting for these people is just to create another opportunity for another person to come and live better life than I do. So it's not surprising. And it constitutes the bulk of uh, our voter population, but also the bulk of the unemployed population in the country. So it, it starts to reason that if, if uh, they... Global Info Analytics are able to make these findings. It just uh, vindicate the fact that the, the ability of the political system to dispense benefit in response to people's civic actions and civic duties, including coming now to kill and vote, has not returned much, much result. So people now think that I rather stay at home than just uh, suffer and come and then uh, vote and then get nothing in return. So I, I think to some extent it vindicates uh, people's frustration and, and apathy and dissatisfaction with the political system and its ability to self-regulate and provide benefits that are due citizens over time. Which, of course, is the focus of this whole thing, is that, well, you saw a lot of people, a lot of people said they saw both parties, the NDC and the MPP, giving money. But they took it and didn't vote according to the monies that they've been given or the inducement. They voted based on their own convictions. That votes well for the, for the, for, for the future of, the, of our democracy, isn't it? I think it's, it's good if you're able to have this thing happening. It's a, it's a kind of protest vote. Protest to the strategy mm -hmm. that political parties now use over the years. Mm -hmm as a weapon of winning elections. So monetization has now become a weapon of, of elections. And people now think it's a strategy that can be used to be able to win elections. Mm. And when citizens demonstrate that they are more rational than just this belittling act of their intelligence, then politicians will now realize that that strategy doesn't work anymore. And they'll begin to look for an alternative strategy that respects the intelligence of the ordinary voter and give them that element of uh, 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 
uh, work in terms of trying to, to win elections. Mm-hmm. And basically, if you look at the context, we have an economic situation that is very hurting, and people are trying very, in very difficult ways to make ends meet. And then all of a sudden, political parties descend in your constituency and begin throwing money out there. If you are somebody who has been looking for resources, who is hungry, definitely you take it. And, and when you take it and you decide to vote differently from the way people had expected, mm. people will not know that it's high time we started looking at alternative strategies that, that brings inclusive development, that respects the, the true worth of the electorate, and that speaks to reason. That can be rationalized or justified rather than just doing it. And, and the reason why politicians keep repeating this is because maybe it has worked in the past. Mm. That at the last minute, when you come in through, the reason why politicians keep repeating this is because maybe it has worked in the past. Mm. That at the last minute, when you come in through, and also educates their colleagues as well as the country as a whole. Because a platform like multimedia is a platform that they let them know that it will work. They will look for an alternative strategy other than that. But two, it also denies people to hold the ability to hold out who should win or not win. So there's no uh, post electoral accountability because you voted for me because of the money I gave you, or because of the flash screen I gave you, because of the Wellington vote or Catalas or we decide that I gave you. And that ends the relationship there. But if you assess political parties based on their policies and manifestos and, and, and their ability to programmatic actions, then it's a continuous change of what? Accountability process. So the, you renew the social contract based on the way you vote with respect to what they have promised you. And you can hold them to account as the processes move and their ability to, to dispense these benefits in a manner that is befitting of the status of uh, the electorate and the constituencies that these by-elections are held. But once I take the money and I vote for you, the, the contract ends there. I have bought your vote, and you can no longer hold me to account mm. moving forward. Okay. So I think when we begin to let them know that we know governance is a continuous process and not just a one-off event, mm. and I'm not going to sell my conscience and my vote for you, and that strategy will never work again. Politicians and political parties will begin to rethink mm. strategy. That is worth considering the intelligence of the people who vote for them. Okay, so, so stay with me. Let, let me come to the studio where I've been joined by Kofi Akpalu. Uh, he is founder or, and, and leader of the LPG uh, party. And they were there as well. You, you, were, you were in Asset North. And uh, you agree with that. This, this is obviously a good thing. For parties like you, yours who say, well, we don't have the funding like the NDC and MPP, and therefore it's about time we uh, demonetize our elections. This is good. How do we maintain the gains we've, we've had from us in North? Uh, actually, uh, uh, I'm from a different point of view okay. in the sense that mm. what actually hap- uh, happened at the place is different from the way you guys are presenting it here today. Really? Yeah. You see, because NDC won the election, people think uh, because NDC is not in government, so they did not pay much or something of that sort. It's not true. They started the inducement. They started way, way before MPP came to the scene. You know, because they were there earlier, because they had their candidate before MPP had their candidate. So they were giving, you know, so they influenced the people to the extent that they were, it's like, they had a contract with them to vote for them. Okay. You, you, you get the point. So the people took the money and voted. Not that they took the money and decided to vote on their conscience or whatever. It's not true. So you are saying that the NDC paid more than what and, the MPP paid? Oh, yes. They started the payment even before MPP came in. It started way, 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 way. Because I was at the constituency. Mm. You know, every corner of the constituency, I was there. You know, Mm. there's no single area or community that I did not visit. I visit every corner. And you go to a place, they will tell you, oh, Charlie, my man, Temu. Because maybe that they've received what they, they, I mean. But if they say you didn't come early, it doesn't mean the end. It means they cannot change their mind. 
Yes, but I'm saying that it, it doesn't, it doesn't mean somebody's money. It doesn't mean it was the NDC. No, no, it was NDC. Uh -huh. Ah, I saw them. But MPP could have also gone there. And the MPP came late. So it's like the, the people have taken everything already. So what M MPP came to give was a, something like a top-up. I'm telling you what happened. Really? Yes. But, but we don't have evidence of that. No, we do have evidence of But what happened uh, I'm, so, I'm so happy, my brother. I'm so happy Musa Dankwa. Is that correct? Yeah, Musa Dankwa, yes. Said, some people said they took some from MPP, they took some from NDC. Yeah. Uh -huh. So what I'm telling you is that, listen to me, my brother. Okay. You were not there. I was there. Okay. You know, I saw the feely feely. Mm. You know, I was traveling. The first time I, I, I met that was I was traveling from uh, Kushia to Senchim. And then I got to Abotre, and over there they were giving them cutlasses, walletin boots, we decide fertilizers, cloth, and the, and the rest, and money. Mm. And DC were doing that. They did all, out, out every corner, they were distributing these items. But the MPP didn't do it? That time MPP had not come. So when they came, they also decided to distribute the same items to the people, mm. plus money. You know, they were sharing uh, cement, cement, yeah, to, to the electorates and as well as to the communities. Mm. Cement, maybe a, a truckload, and then oh, build community center, do this. Everything, they were doing everything. We no never heard of what you're saying. What you're saying. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, what we did see was the governing party constructing oh, roads, no, 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 no. That. That's what we saw. We didn't see no, what you're talking no, no, about. No, 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 no. What you saw, maybe you saw uh, what the cameras can capture. My brother, the, the truth is what I'm telling you. They were sharing these items. Even the day before the election, they were sharing salt and magic cubes and then, uh, you know, herrings, Amani, and uh, uh, Kobe, you know, Kobe, hey, Tilapia. Even Kobe. Yes, I'm telling you. This is what I saw. They were, uh, plus money, 100 cities, they were sharing. Both parties were sharing like that in the, uh, the eve to the election. Then I thought that was enough. Then the day of election, they were giving money at the polling station. So they call you, they give you the money, give you half. You vote, you snap your vote, come and show it to them, and then they give you their balance. Did you see people snapping their balance? Because that's, that's illegal. That's against the laws. You cannot snap or uh, take photograph of your, of your, of your, of your uh, vote. Uh, it's illegal. Mm -hmm. Only if M uh, LPG. Mm -hmm. Or maybe CPP may have done that. It would have been illegal. But MPP and NDC, who are going to arrest them? So you saw people do that? Exactly. Even Samson uh, uh Bodhi MP, mm -hmm. even he was on, on, on Adom. I think he was there that day. Mm -hmm. He was on, on, uh, on Adom. Mm -hmm. And he confessed that he, he is the uh, lead prompter. He was going to the various homes, waking the people in the midnight, uh, prompting them, giving them money, and then taking. Mm. Who gave him that uh, role to play? That you go and give. What, 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 what did you give? I didn't have anything to give. Oh, yeah. So, so you gave nothing. Oh yes, I gave nothing. Oh, but we heard that you. We saw. We saw you giving bread. You gave you, bread. No, you. can you uh, give me one evidence that I gave even a slide, a slide of bread? Oh, but the other day when I spoke to you, you said you gave bread. That was no, that was for, the bread was for for me. For me for you never, give, give, you never give bread? No, no way. I didn't give anybody any dime. You see, because when I was uh, attacking something like him, and then his followers behind him, they said, oh, Apalu, you two are giving tea bread. They just said it just like that. And then the media, you know, the lazy as they are, you know, they pick it and then make headlines out of it. You know? So, please, let, let's be serious with this one, okay? Something like he admitted on a Adum, Adum platform is not a small platform. Mm. For him, by admitting that he was the lead prompter giving people money and all those kind of stuff, you know. So when uh, I asked him, why, why was he giving them money? He said it was TNT. Mm. So why, why in our laws that says I should give somebody TNT, TNT. to go and vote? Mm. We were speaking to some of the electorate who were telling us what they've seen or what they saw. Listen. Papa, 
So that's the sad reality there, that uh, during elections, both parties were pointing accusing fingers at each other for paying inducement to the electorate. The NDC said you were paying, the MPP says you were paying. Well, I'm still in the studio with Mr. Kofi Atbalu. Um, on the line, um, uh, we have uh, Professor Aludu Seydou, uh, who is head of uh, the political department, University of Ghana. We also have our CDD representative with us, and I still think we have the Info Global and Global Analytics uh, Executive Director with us. Now, this, so you are saying that what the survey is putting out that people voted on their conscience no, no, not cannot true. be factual. No, no, no. Okay, yeah. fair, fair enough. No, no. But it, it inspires, even though you're saying it's, it's not factual. But if we get an election where people will vote on their conscience, not by inducement, that will be better for our democracy, isn't it? Fantastic. How do we get there? We only really get there when we have uh, an independent police administration. Independent police, police administration. administration. Other than that, we're going nowhere. What would they do? Yeah, because they will not be afraid of MPP or NDC. And then the media will also support it. You see, sometimes the media is a problem because when they arrest somebody, the media will hype it and then they will push people to go to the police uh, headquarters, blah, blah, harassing the police and all those kind of stuff. You understand? Mm. So... People in MPP and NDC cannot be arrested in this country. So that's why they have their free will to do whatever they are doing. Mm. We are not practicing democracy now. We come, currently, what we are practicing is monocracy. You get the money, you get. Other than that, we are not going nowhere. Even at the primaries, we all witness that. Even it has come to the stand that even kids in secondary schools, SHS and uh, universities, are even inducing people to vote for them. Mm. And it has become some like acceptable norm. So we need to tackle this canker very serious. Other than that, we are not building any future. Mm. Uh, Professor, um, I mean, you've been, you've been around, you understand some of these things so well. Mr. Palu says, well, it is not true that people voted on their conscience. They were induced because of what he saw on the ground. Do you agree with what he's saying? And if that's the case, how do we get out of this, this uh, conundrum? So I think uh, it, it's not fair to just paint one party as uh, the one who distributed money. Yes, evidence that we have gathered indicates both the dominant parties did that. And not just in our central uh, elections party. we've had in the fourth republic. It's, it's becoming uh, uh, monetization or uh, money and, and the elections have become like Siamese twins in Ghana. They, mm. they are co-joined. I'm not sure where exactly, but they, they move together. Mm. And, and I, I, I would be surprised if Mr. Akpalo and his party had the kind of money maybe end this and people, people the practice. But I agree with Mr. Akpalo that we need to enforce existing laws on, on this issue. What does the law say about trying to induce people to vote for you. Mm-hmm. And if there is evidence that this actually happened, consideration to the political party that is involved or the individual that is involved. Mm-hmm. Once we believe there is evidence that this actually happened, consideration to the political party that is involved or the individual that is involved. Mm-hmm. Once we believe things that the real economy. And I believe that if we, we should change our habits towards these things, we are going to get better. Now, if you look at our exchange rates to, to the dollar, in the last year, we lost about, our CD depreciated about 30% to the dollar. That alone increased our debt stock to, um, to $575 million, which is about $108 million cities up from, 400, from a little about $400 million. This is why we are, we are to where we are, borrowing from the external... Distance, uh, gradually reduced, if not completely uh, eradicated. But voting on one's conscience or being influenced is, is very, you see, but there were equally a larger number of people 
who also took the monies and refused to vote the way they were being suggested to vote by being given the money. So it's still kind of a, 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 an endemic that we need to confront uh, head on. Yeah. And I believe that it's not just the responsibility of political parties or security agencies, but it also starts with we, the electorates, that we are able to stand up to politicians and political parties that distribute benefit to buy our votes. But, 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 yes, but, but, but if, 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 if you leave it to us electorate and the political party, we've seen how that plays out. The political parties are willing to supply. The electorate are, are willing to receive. When there is demand, uh, when there is supply, of course, there will be demand for it. So, so, you see, because so, we so if we leave it to that, we won't go, go anywhere, isn't it? No, I've mentioned at the beginning that mm-hmm. it's now a tool, it's now a weapon of elections. Okay. And once in every election, people work with strategies that has proven to have been successful. Mm-hmm. So it's repeated. It's repeated. Because there's evidence to show that it works. So over the years, if we are able to we, the voters, are able to prove to the politicians that if you a, 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 a party A and B come and give me money, then at the end of the day, party C wins, then we do it repeatedly. They will now know that this strategy is no longer working. And that will force them to change their strategy. But once we do it, and they do it, and it keeps working, everybody wants to work with the strategy that, that is successful and, and tested or proven to be true. So it also has to start with this. Mm. To, to now prove to them that even if you do this, what you had expected will not happen. Then when it happens consistently, they now know that, oh, now I think the people are now becoming aware or conscious, mm. Or mm. conscious of what we are doing and we have to change a strategy. So okay. I think it's a holistic approach mm. from the electorates, from the security agencies uh, doing their work impartially to the political parties. Brother, I, I think your, your mic has muted. If you can unmute for us, we'll be grateful. Uh, uh, Professor, I, th- I think your, your mic has, has muted, so kindly unmute for us so we can follow you. But I'm sure that there are, there are laws that, that frown upon inducement, uh, you know, uh, during elections in this country. Mustn't be the case that the laws will work. D- D- Demino is still with us here. Uh, he's with the CDD. Um, isn't it the case that the laws rather should bite to serve as a deterring factor to, to people, politicians, um, and, and voters alike who would want to uh, be given money uh, to go and vote in a certain, part, in a, in, in a certain direction. Ma, 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 see, okay. I, I, let, let, yes, let, I, yeah. I, I have mm-hmm. unmuted now. Mm-hmm. So just, just like I saying, I mean, the law should buy it. I mean, but the laws will not buy themselves. So, I mean, it needs to be enforced uh, by um, our law enforcement agencies. And so, I mean, the police is one, because they were on the ground, particularly in uh, uh, St. North, and then even with Kumewu. And so uh, there, there's a law, because I, I, I know, and I think I read it out earlier, mm-hmm. the representation of the People's Law, mm-hmm. uh, 1992 PNDC Law 284, so section 30, uh, the whole issue about uh, a bribery of, uh, of voters by candidates and then their agents. And so, the, I mean, it, it spells out uh, the issues in there. It also even goes to the extent of dealing with treating, uh, which is the section 34. And so, I mean, there are laws already in place that needs to be implemented. But here's the case, is the enforcement of it that of four. And so, I mean, there are laws already in place that needs to be implemented. But here's the case, is the enforcement of it that... Why, why do they invest? You give them certain interest and then they take the risk. They come to you invest. So if they hear that with this, they will be so much worried that, oh, they will not want to come and all that. And even if this continues, it means your exchange rate would also weaken. And if it weakens, it means that the interest you would have to be paying more will be high. Thank you so much. All right, great. So the interest you'll be having, you need to pay more. Uh, Gloria, now let's let's look at this point. If you look at yesterday, for instance, one of the uh, pensioners were arguing that the government should go at the short end of the market to pay them because the government had defaulted on their domestic bonds as of 28th of last week, I, I think April. 
So precisely, do you think that borrowing from the short end of the market to pay the debt holders or the, the bond holders, do you think that's realistic? Thank you. Okay, sir. Hello? Hey. Okay. Borrowing from the short end of the market, I don't think it's going to help us to finance our debt. In that already, um, this are pensioners. The point that I made, that we saw a bit of some effort from the Office of the Special Prosecutor to take head on some of these, uh, some of the, uh, to take head on uh, and the it. next time. And that is what we've seen. And the whole incidents around uh, like vote buying has become very dominant to the point that now they don't hide and do it. Okay. But then they do it openly, and just open. sometimes very close to police stations. Mm. And so that is where the whole issue is very worrying. Okay. I'm grateful to you for joining us. Uh, yeah, for Domeno, for the yes, with the CDD. Well, Mr. Palu, so the law is clear. Yeah. If you look at Political Parties Law 2000, Act 574, and the representation, of, the law is clear. Yeah. If you look at Political Parties Law 2000, Act 574, and the representation of... Do you think that they, they, they are really looking at what is happening, what the government is doing? That is actually prompting them to say that they will not agree to so 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 unless you pay them. Do you, do you, do you think? All right. Thank you very much. So on the vote in any way punishable by law, we are not seeing this. You say that an independent police service can do this, and, uh, but it takes an attorney general. Bob Watin. Bob Watin. Disclosure. What happened to it? He mentioned a lot of people's name. Mm -hmm. What arrest was he able to do? You mm -hmm. okay? So you see, it won't, it won't work. Okay. We don't. It's not an independent. A good time starts with a great wardrobe. Next stop, JCPenney. Family get-togethers to fancy occasions, wedding season too. We do it all in style. Dresses, suiting, and plenty of color to play with. Get fixed up with brands like Liz Claiborne, Worthington, Stafford, and Jay Farrar. Oh, and thereabouts for kids. Super cute and extra affordable. Check out the latest in-store. And we're never short on options at jcp.com. All dressed up, everywhere to go. JCPenney. Ted, if you can unmute for us, we'll be grateful. Uh, uh, Professor, I, th I think your, your mic has, has muted, so kindly unmute for us so we can follow you. But I'm sure that there are, there are laws that, that frown upon inducement, uh, you know, uh, during elections in this country. Mustn't be the case that the laws work. D D Demino is still with us here. Uh, he's with the CDD. Um, isn't it the case that the laws rather should bite to serve as a deterring factor to, to people, politicians, um, and, and voters alike who would want to uh, be given money uh, to go and vote in a certain, part, in a, in, in a certain direction. Ma, 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 see, okay. I, I, let, let, yes, let, I, I, yeah. I have unmuted mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So just, just like I was saying, I mean, the law should buy it. I mean, but the law should not buy themselves. So, I mean, it needs to be enforced. Uh, by um, our law enforcement agencies. And so, I mean, the police is one, was they were on the ground, particularly in uh, uh, St. North, and then even with Kumewu. And so uh, there, there's a law, because I, I, I know, and I think I read it out in the mm -hmm. representation of the People's Law, mm -hmm. uh, 1992 PNDC Law 284, to so Section 30, um, the whole issue about um, a bribery of, uh, of voters by candidates and then their agents. And so, they, I mean, it, it spells out uh, the issues in there. It also even goes to the extent of dealing with treating, uh, which is the Section 34. And so, I mean, there are laws already in place that needs to be implemented. But here's a case, is the enforcement of it that of four. And so, I mean, there are laws already in place that needs to be implemented. But here's a case, is the enforcement of it that of why, why do they invest? You give them certain interest and then they take the risk. They come to you invest. So if they hear that with this, they will be so much worried that, oh, they will not want to come and all that. And even if this continues, it means your exchange rate would also weaken. And if it weakens, it means that the interest you would have to be paying more will be high. Thank you so much. All right, great. So the interest you'll be having, you need to pay more. Uh, Gloria, now let's, let's look at this point. If you look at yesterday, for instance, one of the uh, pensioners were arguing that 
the government should go at the short end of the market to pay them because the government had defaulted on their domestic bonds as of 28th of last week, I think April. So precisely, do you think that borrowing from the short end of the market to pay the debt holders or the, the bond holders, do you think that's realistic? Thank you. Okay, sir. Hello? Okay. Borrowing from the short end of the market, I don't think it's going to help us to finance our debt. In that already, um, this are pensioners. The point that I made, that we saw a bit of some effort from the Office of the Special Prosecutor to take head on some of these, uh, some of the, uh, to take head on uh, and the it. next time. And that is what we've seen. And the whole incident around uh, like vote buying has become very dominant to the point that now they don't hide and do it. Okay. But then they do it openly, and just open. sometimes very close to polling stations. Mm. And so that is where the whole issue is very worrying. Okay. I'm grateful to you for joining us. Uh, yeah, Mr. Domeno is with the CDT. Well, Mr. Kwalu, so the law is clear. Yeah. If you look at Political Parties Law 2000 at 574, under representation, the law is clear. Yeah. If you look at Political Parties Law 2000 at 574, under representation, of... do you think that the, the, they are really looking at what is happening, what the government is doing? That is actually prompting them to say that they will not agree to so so and so unless you pay them. Do you, do, do you think? All right, thank you very much. So, on the vote in any way punishable by law, we are not seeing this. You say that an independent police service can do this, and, uh, but it takes an attorney general. Bob uh, mm -hmm. uh, disclosure what happened to it? He mentioned a lot of people's names. Mm -hmm. What I read was he able to do. You okay, mm -hmm. so you see, it, it won't work. Okay, we don't, it's not an independent mind. Okay, it's not an independent mind. So, so there's no way out of our problem. No, we can solve it. It will be difficult. So far as we have MPP and NDC, because the media is so uh, there's no way out of our problem. No, we can solve it. It will be difficult. So far as we have MPP and NDC, because the media is for the government. So I believe that the senior citizens, the pensioners, should also sacrifice something small for us. But then maybe government should look at their own um, exchange program. They can make it more flexible. They can choose to pay um, a portion of their interest to them or the uh, matured funds. They can pay a portion this year, and then the, current, uh, the second year, they, next year, they pay a portion to, to them so that they can keep them active. OK, uh, great. So. Uh, the pension funds, the pensioners should also sacrifice and all of that. So, Josephine, do you think that uh, the, the success of the debt exchange program is going to have an impact on job creation? All right, thank you. Um, MPP and DC, and the NDB, I think they are the only political parties in this country. Mm. So, it's like they are rather funding this. Uh, issue. So we need to look at it. Okay. Very, very critical. Okay. And uh, other than that. It's in school. So we should look at other ways other than telling them to because they've sacrificed enough. They've worked for the country. They've toiled. They've, they've sweat for the country. What more should they do at this point? Thank you. What about, what about the jobs? Yes. There's going to be a lot of job creations. I mean, we're supposed to invest. So, like I mentioned earlier on, um, the Commenda Sugar Factory, the Kumfi Fruit Juice um, Factory, the, we have a company that um, produces tomatoes and all. A lot. Are you strong? Are you tough?
account oh. okay. with the Equibank salary account you will enjoy free life insurance oh. free debit card save while you spend and an amazing chance to double Shh. your salary a whole seven oh. and even more consolation rewards in the Equibank double salary promo reloaded Vimo. Guy, this Ecobank salary account sounds interesting. What do you think? Uh, 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 salary promo reloaded. Vimo. Guy, this Ecobank salary account sounds interesting. What do you think? Uh, 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 I agree with you because we are going to suspend most of the interest payments. We are going to suspend principal payment and postpone it into the future. So I believe that we should be able to put it into good use. Now, uh, let's, let's try and just propose that with the IMF coming on board. Uh, uh, Bachi, uh, do you... We going up, never go down, and we stay flat. Open an Ecobank salary account today for a lifetime of benefit. <laughs> Gastro, effective relief from stomach discomfort. Manufactured and distributed by NS Chemist Limited. This advertisement has been written approved by the FDA. For crystal clear and thrilling podcasts and live shows, download and listen to us on Apple, Spotify, TuneIn, Google Podcasts, MyJoy Online, Amazon services like Echo, Amazon Music, and Audible, Stitcher, Adam Online, Overcast, and Pandora. Take note of everything. Sign up for the multimedia digital platforms now to stay updated. Welcome back from the break. This is the pulse. Now, let's take you to the voter region now because the whole municipal assembly has carried out a demolition exercise at the whole Bankoi and part of SDA areas in response to the flooding situation in the municipality. Flood devastated the community, destroying in the process properties running into hundreds of thousands of cities. Now, as more rain is forecast for the area, the Municipal Security Council has taken steps to minimize the impact of floods on the residents. But why are floods spread into areas where we previously did not have flooding situation? Joining us now is Engineer Abdullah Mahama, Civil Engineer at uh, Comtron Engineering and Planning Associate. Uh, George AC is the Communications Director uh, for NADMO. Uh, he is also joining us. Let me start with you, Engineer Mahama. Um, are you surprised by these floods we are witnessing in Hope? Um, uh, good afternoon to your uh, various viewers. I I'm getting surprised about the fact that we are more or less beginning to experience a nationwide flooding. That is my surprise because it looks like we are not picking any indication from the number of floods we are receiving over the past years. That is my surprise because it looks like we are not picking any indication from the number of floods we are receiving over the past years. Reverend Obama Mitete and his interact today in the meeting, they told us that they can do nothing about the death of the pensioner. Ah. We are calling on the nation. Ah. This is not our fight alone. Yes. Let the nation arise. Also coming up, President Kufado hints of plans to review laws current pension funds to guide new areas of investments following current economic challenges and debt exchange program. So far as some of these monies will come back, once government begins to issue the bonds and the repayment starts coming in, they will come back to the banks in a form of... And 15 out of 21 banks recorded losses in 2022 as a result. The drainage system that we have in the country, total disrespect to the environment, uh, would not let us get to anywhere in the the quest to actually extend to global we have to wait for such, such uh, devastation before they carry out instant uh, demolition. Now, let me just quote one paragraph that I've said over and over again on joy. Mm. The land is expected to run at, at 2,000 and 
16 cross 1 at, uh, one, at 925 uh, cross 121 one, state that the office, in this case the assembly, may without notice to the developer carry out instant um, prohibition, abatement, alteration, mm. or demolition of a structure when that structure interferes with the environment, causing nuisance. Mm. And example is what they are just doing now. Are they now getting any um, any court to back them before doing that? They are supposed to do that ab initio. They are not supposed to wait for the assembly, uh, for the court before they do that. That is spelled cl clearly in their uh, their act. So that is what they are doing now, but they are being reactive instead of being proactive to the situation. Okay. That's fact. Mm. Now, so, so how do we get out of this situation? Because we've been talking about this matter year in, year out, that it looks like the people who've put out the assemblies to ensure that the right things are done are not doing them. For example, this one, we've waited for, for flood to come in, destroy properties, before we move in to say we are breaking property. So what must we do? Should we hold people accountable and punish their properties before we move in to say we are breaking property. So what must we do? Should we hold people accountable and punish them? Sorry. And the toughest stroke after this whole, what you call it, DDP, whatever, whatever, whatever came into being. And we, as he, he's right here in the car from the whole firm. You know, when he have our sense of getting better, when the Minister of Finance promised we're going to pay them, he, he, he became a bit better. Now, the whole of... Same at all the various assemblies, mm. they have what we call the tax force. So, mm. finish their dissect or music or whatever meeting. They have the police that backs them in. It's to ensure that at the final authority, mm. when some of these orders are supposed to be given to the tax force to handle so they should be responsible. You are representing government at this institution. And I've said, in fact, I'm sure that you, you, you would have noticed that I'm, be, I'm coming so exhausted in this discussion. Mm. Because this is something that they have so many beautiful laws that are backing them to act. Yeah. And when they don't act, the government or institutions, these people at the as assembly have to be punished or be, be identified and name and shame. These guys are sitting in D8. All the MMDCs in this country have been given Nizam patrols, B8, to move around and work. The assemblies have cars for monitoring. We'll have to just say some of the assemblies are exempted because they are newly uh, assemblies who are not coming in. Others are a bit challenged with, I mean, some of these uh, uh, movable items. But once the law is clear, the assembly have to work in, con in, in, in conformity with the law that has been given okay. to, the, to the country by the law, the, the local assembly acts. Mm, mm, mm. Let, let me bring in George AC, who is the director of communications for NADMO in here. So, so George, I'm, I'm sure by now you've gone in there and completed your assessment. What, what, what is your assessment telling you in terms of the here? So, so George, I'm, I'm sure by now you've gone in there and completed your assessment. What, what, what is your assessment telling you in terms of the... That there's nothing they can do about the condition. This condition is killing people. Yes, yes. All people are dying. Yes, yes, and Mr. Yes. Dufresne says that there's nothing they can do about the death of the pensioners. Pensioners who have worked hard, served this nation with their sweat and blood. They have made their monies. They have put it down for their future use. And if a government policy, this company did not collapse by itself. Don't cost fund management. Hello? Yeah, George, we can hear you. Yeah, I didn't hear your question, please. So my question was... I didn't hear I, your question. We, we were told that... You, preliminary observation that uh, we've mm. got uh, How many people have been, have been uh, affected? If, if, your, if your, your, your officers in, in that part of the country have been able to tell you? Yes, uh, that's the... Uh, uh, and then ask your man, you, you, you post to your man. Uh, we got a briefing that in the course of the day today, uh, the MCE and the team will be moving around to embark on a uh, demolition exercise. So, uh, and I understand from you uh, that, that that has begun. So that's been uh, what we, 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 we are close with, the fact we are close with uh, as of now concerning the whole flooding. 
But, but George, we've always been saying that people, you know, this, this the flooding we are recently seeing. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Uh, you know, these situations are yeah. aggravated by people building on waterways and all of that. I know not more it's also about prevention of yeah. disaster. So what are we doing yeah. in that regard to understand throughout countrywide in terms of people who have built on waterways that could serve as a potential cause of flooding in this country? Yeah, your line, your line has been breaking, my brother Briggs. Uh, okay. if, if I got you right, uh, you are asking what Madmo is doing. Yeah, your line has been breaking, my brother Briggs. Uh, okay. if, if I got you right, uh, you are asking what Madmo is doing. Payment now, that is passed, but we know they have been in a series of meetings with uh, the finance ministry to get to some sort of... Uh, an understanding uh, on Zoom with us, convener of the group, Dr. Eduanani Entry. I believe. Good afternoon to you, sir. Uh, what's the update uh, following your discussions or engagements with uh, the Ministry of Finance for payment of uh, maturing coupons and principals? Well, thank you. I think since uh, on the 17th of last month, that we had a short meeting where they tried to. Being, uh, try to get a technical committee to reconvene and look at pathways. We haven't heard from the ministry, and we were not part of that technical committee. But the other two individual bondholders group, those who uh, attempted themselves, they, they were to work on that committee. They turned their head, one of the parties opted out of the committee. But that is, yes, that's their side. For our side, have never been part of that property. And so since the 17th, that we had a meeting and, and, and extended our 21st April uh, deadline to 28th, uh, since they haven't heard anything from the ministry. Okay, um, I know that you gave the ministry a week uh, to respond to your uh, petition for your payment, the payment of coupons, I know that has passed. That was supposed to be on the 28th of April. And so what happens next? Are you going to pick it? But it wasn't a week. You know, we wrote the letter on the 30th. It came government up to 20. Yeah, in fact, to be honest with you, I was excited to hear your earlier speaker uh, pointing to uh, an act to push that should have been done before. Yes, if, if we had done it earlier, that would have been better. But it doesn't mean we should stop at this point. We need to collaborate and continue to uh, exercise our authority to ensure that the majority of the people living in any given area are safe, you know, than just one person coming to pull up a structure or waterway and then the whole situation changes in that whole enclave. Uh, it's not going to add a world for us. So let's see how we can work as a team going forward. Uh, it doesn't mean also that the situation, everybody is going to be uh, worse. No, because we do the disturbing and continuous dredging, and then uh, we continue to engage people within such communities on what to do when uh, the rains come in. And so, yes, once they pay it to the advice and the instructions from Matthew, NADMU, and all other authorities, uh, we will be uh, sure that their lives, their safety will be guaranteed whilst we continue to implement what we need to do to ensure uh, our holistic safety in any community. In the last one year, what have we done in this regard in trying to prevent flooding? Not dredging of, of drains, but making sure that structures that are in waterways that could cause flooding have been removed. You say that you have to work within the law. We understand. Within the last one yeah. year, what have you done in that regard? Uh, that's what I told you. We keep saying that, you know, we work in partnership with the people mandated by law to do that. Mm -hmm. As of now, not no, is not mandated by law. However, the institutions that are mandated by law, you know, we can advise and they will play the lead role for us to uh, execute those things. So I cannot on authority say that uh, we've done A, B, C in that tandem. No. Uh, there's a particular issue or particular 
things that are close with that power to provide a leadership for us to be able to do this. Mm. So, so you then agree with us that uh, with us that the assemblies probably have failed us, right? We, of course, you have your members there as well. Yes, we are part of the assembly, and, and as my earlier speaker said, the district chief executive is the chairman of the district disaster management uh, committee. And so, yes, uh, if there is a failure, it, it, it's going to be a collective uh, responsibility for all of us. Uh, we need to. Uh, do what is right. But once that somebody uh, designated to provide leadership on that score, as far as the laws are concerned, mm. uh, we need to uh, uh, work with that person to do the right thing. Mm. You, cannot usurp, you cannot usurp somebody's authority to go ahead and be doing uh, some things. No, it, it's not proper. Well, Admo cannot do that. So, so the rings are about to set in. Already we've seen in whole People have had their properties destroyed. But we've, we've, we, the law is also empowering some of you to deal with these issues so that people can have their peace of mind when, whenever it rains. Now they've lost their properties. What must happen? Uh, yes, what must happen is what the uh, chief executive and his team at have, have, have decided to do. That was a good uh, step in the right direction. And those who have lost their properties and co, uh, whatever support we can give them, uh, we need to, to, to do what we can to support them and mm. get back on their feet. Uh, that is the temporal support that can be given them. Uh, as far as the rehabilitation of the full structures that have collapsed are concerned, uh, could you, that's, that's a different ballgame. So what, what support do the people need now? I'm sure your, your, your people in, in, the, in the voter region have sent in a report. What kind of support do they need? They, they affect the victims. Uh, well, well, I'm yet to read the initial one that I got in the morning for uh, engaging the media. Uh, is I'm yet to read the full report uh, to get engaged here to see whether the full report uh, has been sent. I've not gotten that one yet. Uh, once I get it, we'll get to know what so once people's homes collapsed and walls broke down and co, uh, definitely people have been displaced. And if people have been displaced, definitely we need to give them uh, some initial support in terms of relief items. Uh, that, and then maybe put them up in temporal structures like schools, community centers and co. If it gets to that point, definitely uh, we'll need to send some relief items to support them. Hasn't it gotten to that point yet? That's what I'm telling you. I've not read the full report. You have not got to me. I got the initial brief so I can engage the media uh, this morning. I'm but, yet to but, read the but, full but that is, that is report. You have not got to me. I got the initial brief so I can engage the media uh, this morning. I'm but, yet to but, read the but, but, but that is that is a major problem we face in this restructuring was the lack of consultation. If people say they consulted, then you can say lack of adequate consultation. When you consult, you solve the problems very, very easily. So when government has had an MOU with this labor, my view was that uh, before the minister came out with something, they, might, they would have met already mm. and negotiated and agreed that this is what we have agreed with government. So no, now, in the morning, uh, when I spoke with the regional director, she said they were putting the report together and they have not concluded it. So I asked that I get speaking with you now. Isn't it? Oh, we, we, we have some items. We have some, and I told you again. No, no, no. That you you, you just said that when more than 1,000 people are affected, you will be overwhelmed. I've That's why I'm time. saying that. It yes, means, I've been the time so so yes. it, mean, it means Nadmo is not that prepared for the rainy season. No, we are. 1,000. We hardly get it at any time, see, because when it's like beyond that, then we are talking national disaster. What it means then is that the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Interior is going to be on standby to support us as assured us by the Finance Minister. And so uh, we are prepared on that score. So the people of who, who have been affected uh, would have to wait till when uh, to see that help is coming in from NADMO. And even if you are going to help them, yes. what and what will you give them? It will depend on the assessment report. The assessment report will tell the number of people affected, the category of people, what uh, the, the, the needs assessment say. 
a child will determine what, whether blankets, whether uh, food items, whether accommodation, whatever. The report is what is going to determine what they will, uh, what support they will need. And mm. so, but, and I tell you, uh, I believe by close of today, definitely the report should be, the full report should be ready. And tomorrow, later tomorrow, we should be able to kick in uh, to give them assist assistance uh, if need be, if it okay. is in that category. Let me bring in Engineer Mahaba here. In engineer, so from the technical point of view, what must must we do um, so that the rains do not bring the sort of havoc we've, we've, we've begun to witness? Well, the, the floods have already visited us this year. Mm. And so maybe moving forward, when we go out of the rains, and uh, we look at what is ahead of us in the coming years. Um, I just seen something on your video where, in fact, I've spoken about it before, about two years ago, mm. where we still have very nice drains, but we have pipelines. It's on your screen now. You have yeah. pipelines going across, and that becomes a major obstacle to almost all the debris or the leaves, the whatever is being collected along uh, that's what you have on your set, on your set yeah, now. Yeah. We should be able to improve upon this thing where the Ghana water will either go at the level on top of the drain or go under. In fact, even apart from the fact that it's, it's, uh, it's impeding the flow of water, we may have contaminations because of some of these breakages that will go directly into our homes. And moving forward, I think that um, the rains development takes a time, but behavioral pattern in terms of what we can do to actually move obstacles within the, the right of way and other things should be done within a matter of weeks. Like I told, I said, your, the uh, Nadmo uh, Kisi was asking about the few things I stated earlier. The Nadmo is part of the assembly test and the land use and fiscal planning act mm. at 925 is explicit on anything that assembly ought to do. And the assembly picked that book has become part of my daily bread as a as a Bible as a Quran. If they pick that book and they want to ensure that they ex, they they fold the book to the latter, we should not be having any problem. Now this apart from this one, the same book speaks about where people put buildings. Apart from the fact that people are putting buildings on waterways and other places, we are filling all the buffer areas, and this normally happens with the certain putting buildings on waterways and other places. We are filling all the buffer areas, and this normally happens with a certain... Uh, as it currently stands, we really need the program to be able to sustain ourselves as uh, a country. Uh, you could hear the individual bondholders crying, you could hear the pensioners all crying for government to pay them. Plant to a certain level to improve on the bearing capacity of the land before you put up a building on it. Okay. That would have been twice uh, the cost of the building. Mm. So the assemblies ought to have no respect for any before oh. it gets to national. Okay. Thank you so much, Engineer Mahama, for joining us here. George AEC uh, uh, speaks for Nadmo. George, um, if you're there, I'm grateful to you for joining us here on this particular discussion. We are still staying on flat. Resident of Wager and motorists who use the Accra Takari Highway are angry about the seeming lack of action by authorities to immediately stop the perennial flooding of sections of the road. Now, anytime it rains, part of the major highway which links Cape Coast impassable as it is covered with rainwater and sand washed down from the hills in the area. Commuters spend many hours. Maxwell Agbaba has the latest as we continue our Floods of Trauma series. Minutes after torrential rains here in the greater Accra region, the usual chaotic scene is back on the Wager Atala section in the area close to the Takradi Highway. Parts of the road is flooded again. Here, after his truck got stuck in the silt on the road. We said that we will move. Then we move. After 30 minutes, yeah. yes, then happened. Wow. After that, we will come back. All the issue is a big one, yeah. but as I'm saying, since we cannot uh, focus on everything... I have now a concerned resident 
Nana Kwesi Jana painting. He's always on the edge anytime he's not at home and there are signs of rain. He's befuddled how a major road like the Accra Takori Highway will be left to get flooded anytime it rains without any intervention from city authorities. That is experiences people go through here are just hot. When it rains a little, it just has to drizzle. It brings huge traffic. But that is just the beginning. That traffic, even after the rain, continues because there's a pile of sand that comes from up the hill. Because the problem is that clearly, I'm not an expert, but you don't have to be an expert to see that it's a very unstable kind of uh, area in yeah. terms of the, the soil and, and the land and everything. So it, it, every time it rains, there's this huge erosion and it brings boulders and rocks and gravel and everything it takes weeks to clear so what we suffer on the day of the rain is just the beginning of the story what is worse is that what people probably don't realize is that this is not a local <laughs> just a local issue a local problem this road that we are talking about serves as the entry point Central region, of course, to the western region, to north, uh, western north, and of course to Cote d'Ivoire and beyond. And a lot of the economic wealth of this country passes through here to Takradi Harbour and all those places. Well, let's take you to say Zambia because the president of the Republic of Zambia, His Excellency Akainde Echalima, is urging African leaders to back their talks with actions and necessary funding. He believes Africa can become economically independent if talks are backed with actions. The president was speaking at a visit to Zoom Lion, Ghana's Accra compost and recycling plant as part of a state visit to the country. There's more in this report. President Hakainde Hichilema was in Ghana for a three-day state visit upon the invitation of his counterpart, Nana Ekufuado, to enhance bilateral relations between the two countries. The visit to the Accra compost plant was to see at first hand how the private sector is helping solve the waste management problem in Ghana and how that can be replicated in Zambia through collaborations. The president, after touring the Accra compost plant, said he was impressed with the kind of investment done by the private sector. He believes Africans must invest in technology to solve their problems. We want to appreciate our innovative, ingenious mind around this menace called West. So I do, since you're already in another country, I don't have to emphasize the point. We Africans must learn to work together. Um. A good time starts with a great wardrobe. Next stop, J.C. Penney. Family get-togethers to fancy occasions, wedding season two. We do it all in style. Dresses, suiting, and plenty of color to play with. Get fixed up with brands like Liz Claiborne, Worthington, Stafford, and Jay Farrar. Oh, and thereabouts for kids. Super cute and extra affordable. Check out the latest in-store, and we're never short on options at jcp.com. All dressed up, everywhere to go. JCPenney. We a good time starts with a great wardrobe. Next stop, J.C. Penney. Family get-togethers to fancy occasions, wedding season two. We do it all in style. Dresses, suiting, and plenty of color to play with. Get fixed up with brands like Liz Claiborne, Worthington, Stafford, and Jay Farrar. Oh, and thereabouts for kids. Super cute and extra affordable. Check out the latest in-store. And we're never short on options at jcp.com. All dressed up, everywhere to go. J.C. Penney. G to G, government to government, uh, people to people. This encouragement I want to indicate to the uh, executive chairman will become more visible amongst the, the current crop of leaders on the continent. A number of us are resolved that um, we must look out to each other for each other as we push the developmental agenda. Areas. Our continent for a long time was not allocating resources you know, alongside its own priorities. So there was probably connected to your first to the first question. There was a lot of intent talked about, desires talked about, but not matching 
those desires with a resource envelope. Uh, if you followed our conversation in Paris last week, uh, we did discuss. And for me, what was pleasing that a lot of leaders in the meeting there to look at the reform of the global financial architecture agreed that time has come to allocate decent resources to the priorities of Africa, development, jobs. You will see a little bit more convergence, a little bit more concerted effort amongst leaders. Instead of talking politics every time we meet, we must talk economy, investment, trade, joint ventures. The group chairman, Dr. Joseph Siao e. Japan, said 62% of waste generated in Africa is organic and can be recycled with the necessary investments in technology. Over the world, climate change and all the issues that are going on is turning the waste, not as a waste, but a waste to a resource. Now, Global Outlook talks about 2.1 billion waste generated worldwide. Africa, our nature of food eating and habits and other things. In Africa, everybody eats corn. Everybody eats, um, yeah, everybody eats. So the nature of the food that we eat, this is the characteristics. 62% is organic. Plastics is 14% and other things. There are so many, Your Excellency, there are so many thoughts about turning the waste to gas, turning the waste to power, waste to energy and other things. The philosophy that is not good for Africa is that our waste is a wet waste. It's a sandy waste. And so by this characteristics of 62%, you focus on organic treatment. The Accra Compost and Recycling Plant, ARCAP, is an integrated waste processing and recycling company that receives and processes waste into plastic pellet and organic manure for agronomics over 2,400 tons of waste whilst producing over bread to you. And that's our online.com. But we'll leave you in the hands of the Good evening. Hi, now let me share my wild life experience with you at Safari Valley Eco Bar. Welcome to Safari Valley Eco Bar. Our electric shuttle pulled up and in no time our tour began. We were surrounded by wildlife from the moment we entered the Eco Bar. We were greeted by experienced tour guides who took us through orientation and how to better enjoy the experience. Watch these animals freely in their natural habitat and disturb the our presence. We saw zebras, sable, and are just people. Our tour guides taught us so much about the wildlife, their behavior, and how to interact with them. I even fed them. We also went to have lunch in this serene environment. All this amazing experience for this price for adults, this price for teenagers. And this for me. It's a bargain. As the sun began to set, it was time to go back home. But not before dinner, by the house. It's been a thrill of a lifetime, and I can't wait till my next visit. It's been a thrill of a lifetime, and I can't wait till my next visit. Safari Valley Eco Park, bringing you closer to nature. It's the Premier League, all on DSTV. All the goals, clashes, and moments. All of Rashford, Salah, and Saka. The start is getting better and better. All in the language of your choice. All in HD. Available on all these bouquets to choose from. To watch on all these devices. Get DSTV with an HD decoder plus one month compact for 299 CDs. It's the Premier League, all on DSTV. In partnership with National Theatre and Joy FM, Roverman Productions present I Like What You Like, an original Ego White play. Hey, Chrissy Trumpet, what kind of misfortune follows you that when your rich auntie dies, the only thing she leaves you is her ashes? Why, my friend, you are not going to keep this in this household. Hmm, what bit? What kind of misfortune follows you that when your rich auntie dies, the only thing she leaves you is her ashes? Why, my friend, you are not going to keep this in this household. Hmm, what bit? General of the Trade Union Congress, Dr. Yaoba has appealed to the president to cut down expenditure. The reason Ghana has, has had to seek IMF support almost every three years is largely due to the flaws in the way our economy has been managed based on the neoliberal free market ideology. We would like to reiterate our well-known position 
But the IMF program can never take us out of this crisis. Our history of engagements with the IMF provides ample evidence that IMF sponsored programs and policies cannot change our economic circumstances. Another IMF program. I'm his wife. May I know how much is worth? Uh, roughly uh, 350 million dollars. What uh, I like, what <laughs> you like, yeah. shows at the National Theatre on July 7th, 8th, 9th, 14th. Frightful and Fortune Rise from Wilma. And sponsored by Zest Consult, Pidato Limited Company, CBS Industries, Top Choco, Ultimate Fashions, Flora Tissues, and Dunamis Plus Company. And supported by You're welcome to Let's Talk Show Basic here on the Joy News Channel. Yesterday, I'm not seeing your very normal hostess during our view. I'm sitting in for her. She is going to be in the wind for some time now, so you're going to be seeing more of me. So, I have this brother all the way in the States. Now, I'm confused. I think he grew up in UK, but now living in the States, or he grew up in the States, went to live in UK, came, came back to the States, but he's Ghanaian anyways. And the name is Richie O. That is the brand, and he is a gospel musician. But I... I was asking him, so if you're so tilted to Afrobeat, why didn't you go circular? Why gospel? But he's my guest today and he is going to... If you're so tilted to Afrobeat, why didn't you go circular? Why gospel? But he's my guest today and he is going to... ...anything to um, be a dialogue uh, between the social partners. All right, so do you hold the view that it settles speculations that... So... How did you come back? So, how did you come back? Especially the future of what? So, is it, a, is, is it an issue of flexibility of employment or rigidity in the labor market? These are all uh, key um, issues that we need to really um, engage our partners in. Mm. As employers, um, what would you recommend to workers during this time to do? especially when the, the economy is biting. Mm. Yeah, really, I would say that I've been in this game for just a year. Okay. And I think, you know, it was just God taking me through a